It's called powers and exponents. So first of all, we start looking at some definitions. A power is made up of a base and an exponent. So this would be called altogether a power, 3 squared. If you were looking at 3 squared, what does this mean or what is this equal to? Some of you have seen this before. This is equal to 9. What does a power do? It's a shorter way to write repeated multiplication. In this case, writing 3 squared isn't much shorter than writing 3 times 3. Okay? But if I wanted to write 2 to the 5, that is a lot shorter than writing 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Do some mental math. What is that equal to? Work at it slowly. What's 2 times 2? Then times 2. Careful. There we go. We're at 8. Times 2 again. You're adding. 16. And then times 2 again. You're adding 2. We're at 16 at here, times 32. So, but it does point out that one of the easy mistakes that we can do sometimes is we can add instead of multiplying, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. The base is the number written big. The exponent is the number that's written small, and you always write it small and above. So every power has a base and an exponent. Okay? The exponent tells us the number of times that we should multiply something by itself. So in the power of 4 to the exponent of 2, that's equal to 4 times 4, so it would be 16. Repeated multiplication of that number. In fact, the definition of a power is probably the most important thing for understanding the math that we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. On the exam, there's not a lot of questions that say, what's the definition of a power? Instead, an exam question would ask you math that if you didn't know what the definition was, you wouldn't be able to do it. Does that make sense? So for example, on exam, you might get questions, well, we'll see some here in a second. So exponential form, another definition, is the short way to write repeated multiplication as a power. So here's an example. That's repeated multiplication. How would I write that in exponential form? Three, how many times is it repeated? Five times. So that makes it a power. And when we write it as a power, it's written in exponential form. So I'm not going to ask you to write the definition of exponential form, but a question on the exam would look like this. Change the following to exponential form and evaluate. If you don't know the definition of exponential form, you have no idea what you're supposed to do in this question. If you don't know the definition of what it means to evaluate, you won't know what it does. So that's how a math test has definitions built into it. They don't ask you to write out what's the definition, but if you don't know what the words mean, then you can't even answer the question. So write as exponential form, exponential would be 3 to the power or exponent of 4. Perfect. So we've written it as a power. To evaluate, that means get the actual answer. I'm going to show you something with evaluating this one. Okay? We're going to do it first of all the same way we did before. What's 3 times 3? Times 3? 27 times 3? Did it just get hard? Hmm? 
What's three times 27? Okay. It got hard, right? Three times three was fine, right? You got nine. Nine times three, that's not bad, 27. And then take out your calculator, 27 times three, it's 81. So when we evaluate this, it's equal to 81, okay? Multiplication, though, check this out. I'm going to circle those two numbers. What's 3 times 3? Nine. 9. I'm going to circle these two, two numbers. What's 3 times 3? What's 9 times 9? 81. Is that easier than having to do 27 times 3? So you have that choice. Sometimes you can multiply things and make them a little bit small. Okay. Writing this in exponential form. This will be 10 to the exponent 3. Do you know the trick for multiplying by 10? Well, trick, but do you know the, the idea for multiplying by 10? If I had 728 and I multiply by 10? Just add a 0, Just add a zero right? Just move the decimal place. So 10 times 10 would be 100 times 10 again, you just keep adding those zeros and you'd end up with a thousand. You can bring, make sure you bring a drink to class tomorrow. You can make sure that you're writing these notes. The base now is negative 2. When you have a negative base, you're going to need to put that in a set of brackets. And then we have five of them. Now, we could do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and you would get 32, just like before. Now we have to decide when you're multiplying with negatives, What's the rule when you multiply a negative times a negative? Positive. A positive times a negative? Negative. So if you have five, neg five negatives all multiplied together, the question is, will it end up negative or will it end up positive? Okay. So here, after here, it's going to be positive, right? Times by neg So I'm going to put positive here. Then after this one, it's going to be back to negative. Does that make sense? I'm going from left to right. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Times another negative 2, negative 8. Times another negative 2, positive 16. Times another negative 2, it's going to end up being negative in the end. Now, a shortcut that sometimes people use for positives and negatives, when you get a bunch of them together, and see if this makes sense, if you have an even number, like two positives, or four po or sorry, two negatives, or four negatives, or six negatives. An even number will always work out to be positive. An odd number of negatives will always work out to be negative. So if you have three negatives, negative two times negative two times negative two, your answer will be negative. Here we have five negatives. Your answer is going to be negative. Now, you can change things to exponential form with fractions as well. Here, the base is 2 fifths. How many times are we repeating multiplication? Three times. If we evaluated that, how do you multiply fractions? What's the rule? Do you need a common denominator for multiplying fractions? We get a common denominator when we're adding and subtracting fractions. When we multiply fractions, what's our fraction rule for multiplying fractions? Multiply the tops, multiply the bottom. So on the top, I have 2 times 2 times 2. Logan, 2 times 2. Times 2 again, 8. 5 times 5, 25. 25 times 5. 125. Now, do you know a good way to multiply by 25? Imagine quarters. If you have five quarters, how much money would you have? $1.25. That's really easy to figure out. So when you have 
5 times 25 to get 125. It's like having 125 cents, a dollar 25. That mental math makes it easier because you can connect it to something you've probably done a lot better, a lot of times. For C, for C, these aren't fractions. They're just numbers multiplied together. So we just get a negative 32. Okay. And question E, the base is 0 0.1. And the exponent would be 3 times. Now, for evaluating this one, I actually find it's easier if you use fractions. Would you agree that point 0.1, this 1 is in the tenths column, we could write this as 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. In other words, point 0.1 cubed is equal and the same thing as 1 tenth cubed. And we already multiplied 10 times 10 times 10. 1 times 1 times 1 would be 1. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So with fractions, it's probably even easier to do this as mental math. One-tenth times one-tenth times one-tenth is easier. Now that we've got our fraction as our answer, I think one one-thousandth is easy to change back to a decimal. So what's really neat about the units that we're doing is our very first unit of the year was fractions, lots of fraction stuff. We changed fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. If you have one one thousandth, think of your decimals. This is your tenths. This is your hundredths. Here are your thousandths. And so now we can change this back to a decimal where it might have been harder to do it before. Now you guys are allowed to use your calculator for a lot of things. Okay? But whatever you can do with mental math is going to help you in loads of other places as well. So I'm just multiplying 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1. I want to show you something that I think I've shown you before, but just a little reminder. If you're multiplying decimals, zero 0.2 times 0 0.3. First of all, can you do 2 times 3? What do you get? Six. There's one decimal place here. There's one decimal place here. That means that your answer will have two decimal places. Can you write six with two decimal places? 0 0.06. That's the right answer. So when I have 0 0.7 times 0 0.4, what is seven times four? 28. One decimal place here. One decimal place here. Can you write 28 with two decimal places? 0 0.28. Can you do 1 times 1 times 1? It would be 1. Okay. We have one decimal place here, one decimal place here, one decimal place here. Could you write 1 with three decimal places? One, two, three. Yes, I could. So what I'm showing you is, yes, you could type these things into your calculator, and your calculator will give you answers, right? But it, if you think about the math a little bit, it's actually not very hard. Here's something special about decimals, right? Even if I go to 0 0.003 times 0 0.09, what's 9 times 3? Three decimal places here, two decimal places here. Can you write 27 with five decimal places? And that's the answer. So one new thing that you have to learn is how the decimal places come in, but then your regular multiplication is just there from before. Which I think is kind of cool. So. That was, if we look back here, the question we just did, 
the key things that you're going to need to know for the test is this definition, exponential form. That's writing it as the power. And this definition, evaluate, which means you need to write the answer. Yes? Yes. Um, when we get to slide number eight. Okay? So here's our next question. Change to exponential form. Okay? Right? On the exam, on your test. On the exam, you put up your hand and you say, Mr. JR, it says change to exponential form. What does this mean? That's the math. It's actually more like English class. You have to know the definition. I can't tell you on a test. Oh, exponential form like means write it as a power. Well, then I'm telling you the answer, basically. And so that's why it's really important that during class, we're paying attention to these definitions. Because really, if you pay attention during class to these definitions right now, you're going to get to the test. And you're going to be like, yeah, I get that. Somebody who's not here, what are they going to ask in the test? What does this mean? Well, you missed out on an hour of studying for your test by not being in class. That's, in fact, the more attention, this is true for any subject, the more attention you pay during class, the less time you have to study, because technically you're already studying for Friday's quiz right now. And if you take the time in class to go, yes, I got exponential form, you're going to get all of these questions on your test on Friday and be like, I didn't even need to study. And someone's going to say, oh, you're so smart at math. And like, no, I paid attention. OK? So we want to write it in exponential form. Now, each question that we add in our notes adds a little bit of complexities. OK? Now, what do I see in A? I've got fives, I've got A's, and I've got B's. If I take out my ha highlighters here, I'm gonna, I got a five and a five, switch colors. I got an A here, an A here, an A here, an A here. Switch colors, B there, B there, B there. Multiplication, the order doesn't matter. Now this is a step that I'm gonna say I recommend that you don't do, but you could do this step. I could write this as 5 times 5 and then go A times A times A times A and then B times B times B. You see that I wrote the same thing just in a different order. Multiplication doesn't matter the order. It's not like I'm going to go, okay, this would be, what's 3 times 7? 3 times 7. Sorry? 21. What's 7 times 3? It's going to be the same answer, right? If I... If I did that, I'm going to find out who's faster at multiplication, Justin or Logan. Justin always goes first. Okay, five times four, twenty. Four times five, twenty. Right, exactly. Riley's like, it's really not fair if I always give the same question just in the different order, second, because the second person could technically be always faster. Well, yeah. So, well, I could like I could do something really complicated and unfair to Carl here, like 19 times 21. She like shaking her head like. Yeah, it's 399. Okay, 21 times 19. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's also 399. <laughs> right, because the order doesn't matter. So we could rewrite the orders here, and then. Each individual repeated multiplication in exponential form. How could I rewrite 5 times 5? The base would be 5. The exponent, 2. How could I rewrite a times a times a times a? a to the power of 4 or to the exponent of 4. And how could I rewrite b times b times b? b cubed. Can you see that you could skip this middle step, most likely, and just go to there by counting? How many fives do I have? Two of them multiplied together. I can write that as a power, five to the exponent of two. 
So in B, if we just did it directly, do we have any repeated multiplication? Yes. Exponential form says write all repeated multiplication as a power. So how many twos do I have multiplied? Four. How many x's? How many y's? Two. And this is where paying attention in class makes your life a lot easier. Because if you don't know what exponential form is, truly, like, let's think about what the math that we have to do here. Look at the math. You had to count that there were four twos. Right? I could ask a kid in grade two and say, how many twos do you see? They would say four. The math level of this is really simplistic. The hard part is the new definition. If you don't know what exponential form is, right, you can't go to the next step, which is, can you count to four? Can you count to two? Can you count to three? Right? So the definition is really important. It makes the math easier. Write it as a power. So here, go back to our beginning of our notes. What is, oh, I got to go back one further. What is a power? It's made up of a base and an exponent. Oh, so yeah. when it's, it is, the power is the whole thing together. The four with the exponent of two together is a power. Okay, okay. So we have this question that says change to exponential form which means write each thing as a power. So in this question, next part is expanded form. Here's another definition. Writing the power as repeated multiplication. So here we have powers, and we want to write them as expanded form or repeated multiplication. Well, 4 to the 5... is 4 times 4 times 4. 1 quarter to the 4 is 1 quarter times 1 quarter times 1 quarter times 1 quarter. So again, the math part is really simplistic. It's like, could you write 1 quarter four times in a row? Uh, yes, Mr. JR. I don't, this is like kind of repetitive, but it's not very hard. But if you don't know what expanded form means, then this becomes difficult. So do we have any powers in part C? Yes. 16 is just 16. It's not written as a power. But x cubed is a power. That's x times x times x. y to the 4 is a power. That's y times y times y times y. Okay. So I am going to give you this page right now. We are going to add, before we evaluate, I'm going to, when I hand it out to you, I'm also going to get you to write at the top, write in expanded form, and then you're going to evaluate it. For evaluating some of these, you're going to need your calculator. 